And so one of the questions that often comes up in clinic with our patients who have convulsive seizures, especially in their sleep, is how can they know that these are happening? So whether it's the parent, um, you know, uh, spouse, but how can they, you know, be aware that these are going on, especially if the person's in a different uh, bedroom. Uh, and so this is where monitoring comes in. This is the real role. Uh, it helps alert the family that it's happening. It, it allows them to, to be there and assist the patient. Uh, and more importantly, it really gives them peace of mind. I mean, that's where our families come back and say is it gives them, you know, peace of mind to know that their loved one is safe, uh, that they're not having an event that they don't know about and they don't kind of find out about till the next morning. Uh, that's the huge benefit. The other question we often get then is if you need monitoring, what monitoring do you use? And so we sought to answer this question at Lamar Children's Hospital. We have an inpatient uh, video EEG monitoring facility, just like many uh, epilepsy units do. Uh, we monitor our patient seizures. We then use the various devices that are out there for home use to say which ones of these are capturing the worrisome seizures or the ones with convulsive activity that our patients want to know about at home. Uh, and we also wanted to look at ones that really um, you know, the patient gets in bed, they're not sticking something on themselves, they're, they're truly non-invasive. They're, they're going to sleep just like me or you would uh, in their bed. Uh, and when we did all that, the bottom line was that the MFIT monitor detected about 9 out of 10 convulsive seizures. So not 100%, but probably nothing's going to be 100% short of being in the hospital. So it's a really high bar that I think they've set. Uh, we got you know good detections and detections kind of at the beginning of the convulsive seizures. We looked at a broad range of ages and kind of body sizes, so all the way down to you know young children up through adulthood. Uh, it was still able to detect the the, the events at that time. Uh, and like I said, I think the really key thing for folks uh, that are worried about events in their sleep uh, is this doesn't you know, touch the child, doesn't touch the adolescent, a young adult, uh, they get into bed just like they normally would. So it's, from their standpoint, pretty, uh, you know, unobtrusive, and yet it provides that peace of mind for the whole family at home, knowing that uh, they're being monitored, even though you wouldn't know it, kind of, you know, looking at the bed or the bed situation. The last question we often get from families once they thought this could be for me is, you know, cost. We realize that that's, you know, a concern, everything in medicine, the monitor. Uh, so we really reassure families, I mean, uh, the cost is reasonable. Uh, it's less than some cell phones nowadays. Uh, there are foundations uh, throughout the United States that for families that really struggle with it, they're able to help you. Uh, some insurances will cover this under their durable device component, just like they might crutches or wheelchair. So uh, it can be done, just check. Uh, if you go to mfit.com, so it's E-M-F-I-T.com, uh, they list the foundations that work with them to, to make these uh, costs down and to make them more affordable to folks that are really struggling to get this. Because uh, at the end of the day, the goal is really um, to give you the families kind of that peace of mind and, and realize you can't set a, a dollar amount on that, but to make it affordable for everybody that needs one.